east we have Kurt Sampson playing Rug Delver, and on the left we have Mickey Urban playing Jun. Game three here for these two players, a more traditional matchup, uh, as it were, for Legacy. Uh, both players have kept seven cards, and we'll have Kurt Sampson, excuse me, playing first here. Um, of course, we are in a sideboarded game very quickly for you guys, so we will bring those forward for you to take a look at. Um, I do have Kurt's sideboard in front of me and you guys can see it on the screen being it's a jun deck um wouldn't be surprised to see maybe sulfur vortex come in here even though it can be hit by abrupt decay um crows and grip potentially submerged certainly going to be joining him um life from the loam to be able to get that life from the loam plus wasteland engine online as well so definitely some options here for kurt on the right just so you know we have those those sideboards swapped i believe or those don't oh they're right Oh, those are yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay. I thought I saw some merge on both sideboards there. Oh, okay. My bad. Uh, for the Jun side? In the sideboard, I think uh, in Staring Bridge is very good against very good against Rogue historically. Yeah. It's possible because Mickey is not... It's not like he's playing Burn. He's not really equipped to run through went through in Staring Bridge himself, except with Lava Mancers and Deathrite Shamans. It's possible that's more of an anti-show-and-tell card, but it is that card is very challenging for Rogue to beat. He has a Red Blast and a Pyro Blast that seem good here, and two copies of Umazawa's Jite. And we are going to see a Thoughtseize here from Mike to start the show. You're going to see a hand of Volcanic Island, Tarmogoyf, Rough Tumble, Is It Charm, Polluted Delta, and Forked Bolt in Kurt's hand. So not the traditional start that you that you find from a Rug Delver deck. No Ponder, no Brainstorm, no Nimble Mongoose, and no Delver of Secrets. Yeah, I mean, for, for example, you could take Tarmogoyf here and leave him with a purely reactive hand. Or you can take Is a Charm and be happy to trade one for one. I mean, there's a lot of angles, a lot of routes Mickey can take. And so we do see here with Mickey's hand, there's also a uh, abrupt decay there. Right. So the reason that being important, of course, is he's going to take a rough tumble. Is sure. that that Tarmogoyf is the only proactive card in Kurt's hand. And that one's going to die to, of course, the uncounterable smother effect, so. Yeah, that's a kind of a weird thought seize there because, it, you know, Kurt has just a handful of cards of medium quality. There's no uh, obvious one to take there. And Mickey can kind of sculpt the game in a variety of directions once he has that information. And so Mickey is going to pass it on back. I believe Nimble Mongoose was the draw for Kurt. We're going to see Tarmogoyf. Mickey going to take a draw step. Mickey going to find a forest here. Not a bad draw. Yeah, not too bad at all. So you do see Dark Confidant in his hand along with that Abrupt Decay. And a card to the back. Uh, not quite sure what those are, but the rest of those cards are lands right now. So not the most powerful of hands. And it is a little bit surprising here. To yep. see him take the rough tumble, but we'll see what happens. I mean, his hand has Dark Confidant and Death Right Shaman in it. So I think Mickey is just debating between Abrupt Decay and Dark Confidant. Yeah, that's what it feels like. I mean, may also see Death Right Shaman join the fray here, too. Maybe to lead that out there, to maybe bait out, bait out a little bit something. He bait out that is a charm. Sure. And that's what you see. You do see Death Right Shaman. So Polluted Delta come down for Kurt. What you're going to see here is Forked Bolt take care of that. Yep. Grow the Goyf a little bit. With Sorcery. Sorcery creature. We'll have the Tarmogoyf die for you guys out there in a minute. No, no sense in guessing. You I mean, can't be sure. Tarmogoyf drawn for Mickey this turn. And Mickey's draw certainly, certainly wasteland proof. Yeah. And now we do see Abrupt Decay take care of the Tarmogoyf. The sequencing there just a little bit odd, as you know he's not be able to max. He's not able to maximize his mana the way that he played these these first couple of turns. Right. If he had spent, if he had played, for example. Um, one of his two mana spells on turn two, then turn three could have been Shaman plus the remaining two mana spell. Do you see Lightning Bolt drawn here for Mickey. I don't see a bad lands in her play. And now you do see Dark Confident, Tarmogoyf, Lightning Bolt, and another bad lands in his hand, so 
can't play two creatures this turn if he chooses to. But Kurt has uh, drawn a daze in the intervening turn, so. So Dark Confidant. And this, is gonna, this is going to be a, a very awesome daze for Kurt. Yes, it is. So you just float the mana, and he's yep. going to daze the Tarmogoyf. And uh, I assume maybe is it Charm the Bob here? Yep. And now he's really, Kurt's really starting to pull ahead here. Yeah, so the, the sequencing on the those first couple turns from Mickey definitely exposed him to the uh, days Kurt had drawn in the intervening turns. And now, you know, Kurt getting to play all these spells for value, close to the threshold with this Numa Mongoose. So just a very good sequence of events for. There's the Izzet Charm. I'll take care of the Dark Confidant. It's going to leave my, excuse me, Mickey with... Not a lot of action, and yeah. it's not easy to deal with no mongoose in the first place. Well, Kurt is down to just Stifle and his Volcanic Island, and I believe he just drew another Stifle, so he's going to have to ride this, this goose home. So we're going to see Badlands here. And we're going to see Bloodbraid Elf. Here we go. Not a bad thing to Stifle. Yep. Which is the Cascade trigger on Bloodbraid Elf. And, yeah, Mickey happy to trade if he's, uh, if he's allowed to. We're going to see Volcanic Island. And Kurt giving this turn a little bit of thought before casting a Scavenging Ooze. Yep. Okay. So a different kind of threat here from Kurt. But Mickey's last card in hand, I believe, is Lightning Bolt. So he's going to be able to handle this. Okay. You see the two players just trading back and forth and back and forth. Yeah, but the Jund deck feels like its attrition elements are just a little bit better. Yeah. And Kurt's going to be drawing much softer. I mean, he has Brainstorm and Ponder, which are awesome, but he yeah. also has a lot of cards like Stifle, Pure Stays, Force of Will, those kind of cards where uh, Mickey's drawing a lot more just solid, solid cards. You're going to see a Deathrite Shaman here. So Mickey, empty-handed, Kurt draws a card. This matchup typically very, very back and forth, as you can tell. Pendulum swinging back and forth between both players. Both players at multiple points in this game look to be fairly ahead. Yeah, and another noteworthy situation that's that's developing here is now Wasteland is also a very powerful draw for Mickey because he can cut Kurt off of a color. Yeah. Whereas, you know, Kurt's Wastelands are not good right now. Can you see? The Grim Lava Man. Well, another... Okay. Some Another merge, awesome draw. Submerge in Kurt's hand right now. But these are not great submerge targets. Yeah, oddly, <laughs> oddly enough. As we're going to see Deathrite Shaman here remove something from Kurt's graveyard. Going to take care of that Is It Charm. Put him down to 17. And the pairing of, of Lava Mancer and Deathrite Shaman just gives Mickey so much control over the way the game gets played. Yeah. He can race, you know, he's threatening to burn Kurt out. If Kurt applies pressure to the board, he can start gaining life with Deathrite Shaman. I mean, you know, the unique thing here, too, is that Deathrite Shaman slowly but surely can actually go to work on Kurt's graveyard and reduce that one mongoose yeah. from a 3 3 to a 1 1. And speak of the devil, Wasteland is here. He's going to float some mana. See Deathrite Shaman activation. Okay, going to take her stifle and bring Kurt down to 15. If I was Mickey, I think this is the turn where I would start sending in with my Bloodbraid Elf. You're ready to make that trade? Yeah, you're also hedging against potential uh, like more copies of Buff Tumble. Because if he wants to trade, that's great. Then, then. Like, I understand you're giving up a little bit of value because you're close to getting the Mongoose off of Threshold, but you're so far ahead that the only card that seems like can catch him up is his Rough Tumble. So I would try to hedge off a little bit. We do see Wasteland here. Make an attempt to go after that volcanic island. Not sure if there's another stifle hiding over there or not. I mean, we had to stifle this because again, we're we're playing the rough tumble. Yeah. Yep. Content to pass. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a small thing, and I I definitely can understand Mickey feeling like, all right, that thing's not going to be a threshold soon. I can wait and then start attacking with Bloodbraid Elf, but. I would just be scared to death of Rough Tumble right now. Yeah. You're going to see Ponder here. Hit two, hit three. A couple of critters there. Looks like a Delver Secrets and a Mongoose along with a mystery card. I'll tell you, uh, unless that, that, 
Unless that's an insane ponder. If it's not, if it's not rough tumble, I'm sending it back. If right now, if I'm Kurt. Two rough tumbles in Kurt's sideboard. One already discarded from a first turn thoughts. He says, you're going to see Nimble Mongoose come across here, mm. putting Mickey down to 12, and you're going to see a Tarmogoyf. So putting a bit of a fight as we see Deathrite Shaman here. Take care of that Ponder. Bring Kurt down to 11. We're going to see Grim Lava Mancer do a little bit of work, maybe. I think, I think he just make, wants to see if there's cards he can remove from his graveyard to shrink the Tarmogoyf. Yeah. Nice thing about Deathrite Shaman and Grim Lava Mancer, you actually do have control over the size of that bad boy. Yep. For the most part. You do the best that you can. Although he also has his own Tarmogoyfs in his deck too, so it's like a little, it's a little confusing. Yeah. And now we do continue play here. Lava Mancer going upstairs, going to knock Kurt down to I believe nine now. Draws a, draws a, draws a Bayou. So we, can we get a foothills. can we get a price check on the Goyf? I think we're at instant creature, sorcery, land would be my guess. This is a four or five right now. And Kurt's still hanging out with that submergent hand, trying to pick his spot. Yeah, well, I really do like waiting here. Oh yeah, I mean he hasn't found a he has not found a spot yet where it would be that powerful. So I like the patience. Although he may have to make a move at some point, he might have to make a move this turn because he can't really attack with the Tarmogoyf into Bloodbraid plus Lava Mancer, and he can't. I guess he has one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so he can still attack with the Mongoose, but again, that's just a trade with the Blood Braid. So I feel like combat is not at a, now at a point where it, it's not profitable for Kurt to be attacking, so he might have to fire off that Submerge now. Although, of course, submerging, that, submerging any one of his creatures is not, not ideal. See a little bit of calculation here from Kurt. I mean, if he sends in that Tarmogoyf, I'm getting that Blood Braid in, in their a ASAP. Let's see, a lot of con we're kind of playing a lot of things here. Yeah, I, yeah, there's a, up. you know. And Mickey has to be concerned about uh, about Stifle. Like, yeah. if he's planning on using Lava Mancer, uh, Lava Mancer and a Blood Prey block to take down this Tarmogoyf. Yeah, there's like a million things going on on the, on the board right now. A lot of subtle things going on. Yeah. So do you see Tarmogoyf and Nimble Mongoose finally coming across it again? Kurt feeling he's underneath enough pressure from Grim Lava Mancer and, and Death Red Shaman. It's time to make a move. Well, he certainly he certainly can't win this game by blocking. So that's, that's he true. got attack. Now we're going to see Blood Raid Elf Trey here with the new Mongoose, or at least make its best attempt. Mickey falls to eight. Now we're going to see a follow up Mongoose. Yes, we are. Pressure is on. Yep. Death Raid Shaman. Taking care of Stifle. Grim Lava Mancer. care of two more points putting Kurt down to five and now I think we're going to see the trigger on that submerge yes we are that's going to take care of death right shaman and now you have to consider as he does draw that if he was going to sack a fetch line or not well the sacking the fetch line is very significant because it means he has a chump block now mm -hmm. You can tell. Yep. I mean, he has a lot of huge draws here. Yeah, That's for yeah. sure. I mean, he can, even if he chump blocks and shoots, he's still drawing to Bolt and to Blood okay. Braid. So. So you wonder if he sees the ramifications of that. 
He's got some fine draws, you know. He's got like Liliana is very good here. And so Abrupt actually, decay. Now that was a strange play because actually what he did is he sacrificed the land before submerge resolved. I don't Let know what submerge he, resolve and then play death rich on him. I'm not sure why we why we're worried about the extra mana. I mean, we're still in a spot where we have to chump. Now you just see these two guys come across here. Something's going to step in front of the step in front here, and if you're, I mean, I think you just have to put Lava Mancer in front of, um, of the Tarmogoyf and shoot. Sure. Let's we'll take a look at the graveyard. See exactly what the creature types are here. Or excuse me, the card types for Tarmogoyf. See if there's anything he can do to make it so it's not a 4-5. And you do see Instant, you do see a Tarmogoyf, you see Rough Tumbles a Sorcery, and you see Wasteland, among others, as a land. So that thing's gonna be a 4-5 no matter what. Yeah, he can't, he can't stop, he cannot stop it from, no way to shrink it. Yep. Well, it's time to step in front. And we'll have an activation here. You know, next turn, if, if Kurt uh, doesn't draw anything of significance, he still can chump block Tarmogoyf, shoot with Death Right Shaman again, and then go in the last turn with the same, yep. the same set of outs. But that's going to change things. Yep. As Delver Secrets so does show up. Bolt or not a creature. Tarmogoyf is not, not bad. Not bad. It's actually insane. I mean, we need to hit with our Delver flip like now, right? Yeah. Kurt. Otherwise, Kirk can just block Delver with Death Right Shaman. And he hits a stifle. Stifle. And stifles. Wow. That's a huge draw. Stifle I mean, is unbelievable here. He can't afford. He can't actually use the Death Right in response because he has to chump block now. Yep. So Kirk can actually can't actually alpha right now. I think he can only send Delver of Secrets. Because an alpha means he just dies on the way back to the Tarmogoyf. Yep. Tarmogoyfs run into each other. Deathrite Shaman chumps the Mongoose and then he's looking at a lethal attack from a Tarmogoyf. So this is where managing this This board, is managing close. This, is <laughs> this one is close. Curious to see what the last card is in Kurt's. I can't, I can't imagine it's anything good. Maybe it's like a daze or something. Yeah. I can imagine it having a huge impact on the game. Wow, this is. <laughs> this game has been back and forth, the yep. pendulum. Vicky's definitely selected a path and has, has continued down the road the whole time. Yeah. So Stifle goes into Kurt's hand. Now you see the math beginning to take place here. Where can I attack? Where can't I attack? Is it just insectile liberation of the air? Can I attack on the ground with anybody? How does it all work? Attacking on the ground is not good. That I'm fairly confident. Yeah. Um, you just see an attack in the air with insectile aberration, bringing Mickey down to one. And Mickey's going to activate death right shaman. And is this the one that you stifle, or do you stifle the next one? You stifle this one. Okay, here we go. Draws a card. It is Mox, Mox Diamond. Diamond. Wow. And that is it. Kurt Sampson with a heck of a comeback with Rug Delver moving on to the finals, defeating Mickey Urban and his Jun deck two games to one. Congratulations to Mickey. I know he's, he doesn't actually play in tournaments all that often at all, so it's mm -hmm. nice to see him show up and, and have a nice performance. Mm -hmm. Really, really close game three there. I'm yeah. sure that's why the other two games took so long as well, is because, I mean, you could see with that game, back and forth, a lot of decisions to be made. Yeah, oh, for sure. And I think I, I think Mickey's sequencing in the first couple of turns there uh, ultimately led to his downfall. Yeah. Uh, Kurt was, you know, pretty fortunate to draw a daze there in those evening turns, but even setting aside daze, the efficiency with which Mickey deployed his cards in the early turns uh, left him a little bit behind.